Why do good and evil exist? This is one of our biggest questions of our existence. Why do these exist? And this has been a question that's been asked for thousands of years. We certainly know they do. The balance, the struggle between good and evil is something that we're obsessed with. It's all around us. It's in us individually, in our society, in our entertainment, programs, movies, obsessed with this struggle between good and evil. If it's covered by philosophy, religion, psychology, sociology, so why do they exist? I will give you the simple answer and then we're going to dive into it. The simple answer is this. Good is not stronger than evil. Evil is not stronger than good. And that is why we have both. Now when it comes to the existence of good and evil, we have theological reasoning, which turns to a religion. You look at polytheistic religions that have gods of creation, gods of destruction. They're fighting against each other. You look around, kind of makes sense. You look at monotheistic religions, like the Western religions, and you get into some struggles because if there is one God that's perfect and good and he created everything, then why is there evil? It just doesn't seem to be adding up. And then you get this character introduced called Satan. Oh, okay. So it's this battle between God and Satan, but monotheist is one. Uh, we're getting into poly. If we got more than one, let alone adding Jesus and the Holy Ghost, and maybe we'll just keep him out because I don't think anybody knows what the heck he even is and what that's all about. But anyway, and then there's philosophy. You have philosophers like Socrates who believe mankind was generally good, but a society can make him evil. Then you had Machiavelli who was the opposite, saying mankind in general was evil. You need a society to keep him good. You need good arms and good laws in order for mankind to behave. I'm going to talk about an old Star Trek episode where this higher intelligence wanted to know what was stronger, good or evil. So he took this barren planet, put a bunch of good guys and bad guys on it, and had them beat each other up, okay? Let's see which is stronger. Well, of course, the good, good, good guys won. I mean, you got Captain Kirk with his double-handed karate chop. You can't beat that. He comes at you with that. You might as well give it up, okay? You got Spock with the pinchy thing. You're not going to beat him. So the good guys win, but then the higher intelligence is still confused. Captain Kirk says, well, what did you offer them to fight? Well, I offered them individual power. What did you offer us? I offered the freedom of your people. There you go. So when you get beyond the ridiculousness of a higher power throwing people on a barren planet in the, in the cheesy fight scenes, when you get past that, you get to a very powerful lesson at the end of the episode, a lesson that should not be forgotten. It's not about which is stronger, it's about what you're fighting for. Now we're going to get into Darwin's evolution. We all know what's a huge part of evolution, survival of the fittest. And nature doesn't care. You've probably heard about how nature is cold. Well, it's true. So nature is the judge. You have two species. Okay, you, you're surviving, you're multiplying, you go on. You, you're not surviving, you're not having kids, you're gone. The species who's about to get extinct says, wait a minute, we're good, we're, we're compassionate, we're nice to each other. Nature says, you're confusing me for somebody who gives a crap. You're not surviving, you're not having offspring, you're extinct. And that's, and that's it. The reasons why human beings have love, have compassion, have generosity, have what humans classify as good traits, good characteristics. The reason is 
because we needed those things to survive. And actually, I think that's very powerful. I find that to be more powerful than anything in the myths. I find that to be more satisfying than anything religion ever gave me or, or ever will gave, give me. We have those characteristics because we needed them to survive. Now you can't say the same thing on the other end of the spectrum because obviously human beings don't just have good characteristics, we have bad characteristics as well. I would argue that the majority of human beings are good and have those good characteristics and the reason why is we needed that to survive. A lot of the good characteristics can come from a mother's love for its child. In order to survive, some animals, they have kids, they're pre-programmed. As soon as the uh, animal comes out of the womb, it's ready to go. Humans and other primates are not like that. A baby is born for months, the thing just kind of sits there. It's not going anywhere. It needs to be taken care of. It needs its mother to feed it, protect it, and that takes love. The infant, the baby, needs love in order to survive. It's about survival. You look at something that we'd classify as a careless killer without conscience. You look at a shark who any survivor of the Indianapolis in World War II will tell you it is nothing but a mindless eating machine. It doesn't care. And for the shark, that has worked. And it's worked so well that a shark is what we call a living fossil. For hundreds of thousands of years, there is no change. It works for the shark. Being an eating machine works for the shark. It doesn't work for us. It doesn't work for humans. We need love, we need compassion in order to survive. So why do we have both, good and evil? Because nature doesn't care. And why do humans have both? Well, we really rely on what we call good characteristics to survive. You might say we also rely on some of the things we consider bad things in order to survive. It can certainly be argued that greed could come in handy for survival. That, that certainly can be argued. Now, individually, what should we be? Should we be good or evil and, and why? What, what is the reason? A big argument that religious people make is, well, I'm good because I have this God who's telling me to. And without this imaginary sky daddy, why, I would just sin all over the place. Well, if you're not religious, you don't have that crutch. You don't have that nonsense. And, and I believe it is nonsense. So what do you have? You have who you are. You have what you want to be. Confucius talked about an exemplary person. What is the definition of a perfect gentleman, a perfect lady? This is philosophy. Confucius, Socrates, how to live your life, the best way to live, the best way to behave, what are virtues. This is an obsession of philosophy. And I strive to be what Confucius considered, considered the exemplary person. Honesty was the number one virtue, according to Confucius. So why, why do I want to do this? I want to do this not because of a religion, some God, some spirit. But this is what I want to do because it's who I am. I was born this way, and that's all I need. That's absolutely all I need. So what are you fighting for? Are you fighting for equality? Are you fighting for justice, as in proper consequences for actions? Are you fighting for your family 
to be safe and secure? Are you fighting for your community? Are you fighting for your country? Are you fighting for knowledge and education? What are you fighting for? That's what's important. This is James Kirk Wall saying, may your life be long and your actions be good.